In this lecture, we will focus on test level basis. The learning objective here is to compare the different test levels from the perspective of test basis. At the end of this lecture, you should be in a position to differentiate which test basis corresponds to which test level. Let's start with the component level. We will now list down different requirements required to perform component testing. The first requirement for component testing is the detailed design. Let's see what detailed design means. Software designer writes detailed design to give a software development team an overall guidance to the architecture of software project. If this document is available for component testing, it will help the tester to understand the internal structure of components, which component will be available for testing. The second requirement is code. Since component testing is done on the smallest unit of code, code is one of the requirements for the component testing. One more important point. Component testing is a white box type of testing, where code is visible to the tester. The third requirement is the data model. In component testing, we validate the component of software by providing different data like valid and invalid data to validate if the component behaves as expected. The data model can help in selecting the input data and validating it against the expected output. The fourth requirement is the component specification. This refers to specific documents that layouts how the component is implemented and its purpose. If the tester knows how the component is implemented, then it will help them to write robust component testing test cases. You need to remember the four test bases of component testing, which includes detailed design, code, data model, component specification. Now, let's move to integration testing. The first requirement is software and system design. Like component testing, here also we need a design document, but instead of a detailed design, we go for the software or system design. By seeing this design document, we will come to know how components are connected and how they are interacting with each other. The next one is sequence diagram, and this is how a sequence diagram looks like. A sequence diagram helps the tester to understand how data flows through the interfaces. The third one is interface and communication protocol specifications. Suppose you are using any specific protocol for communication with other modules. In that case, you need the protocol specification to conduct integration testing on the interface to check if data is sent and received as expected. The fourth requirement for integration testing is use cases. This is how a use case diagram looks like. Using this one can know how the feature will be used. If we know how the interfaces are going to be used by the user, then we can prepare better integration test cases. The fifth requirement is architecture at the component or system level. Similar to detailed design, Architecture provides a detailed overview of how component interacts with each other, and it is one of the helpful requirements for performing integration testing. The next requirement is workflow. Similar to the sequence diagram, workflow lets us know how data flows in a software. This information is useful while writing an integration test. The last requirement is very important. Apart from the internal interfaces, we must know how software is going to interact with external interfaces. So all the external interfaces must be defined and provided as an input for the integration testing. These were the requirements which can be used as an input for integration testing. 
software and system design, sequence diagrams, interface and communication protocol specifications, use cases, architecture at component or system level, workflows, external interface definitions. Let's now move on to system testing requirements. The first one is very obvious. We need a system and software requirement specification. This is the requirement which we saw previously. It lets us know that we should implement in the software. Using this tester can write their test case, which will be used to test whether implemented is correct or not. The second input is risk analysis report. Based on the level of the risk and likelihood of fault occurrence, test cases can be prioritized. Next is a use case, epics and user stories. They all provide a similar type of information. If we know how the system will be used by the user, we can use that information for writing system level test cases. Next is the model of system behavior. Most of the time, it is not possible to perform testing on the actual hardware for which software is developed due to high investment cost. So to reduce the cost, the model of the hardware is developed on which system testing is done. If we have the model of the product, we can provide the input and check the corresponding output. Next requirement is a state diagram. This provides us with the abstract view of different states of the software. Using this information tester can write test cases for a different state. This concept we will explain in more detail in Chapter 4. We will also solve some practical questions based on it. The last one is System and User Manual. User Manual lets us know how the system should be used. What you need to remember is, for the system testing, the requirements are system and software requirement specifications, functional and non-functional, risk analysis reports, use cases, epics, and user stories, models of system behavior, state diagrams, system and user manuals. Let's now move on to acceptance testing. If you see any high-level document, then you can consider it as a requirement for acceptance testing. For example, the first requirement is a business process, user or business requirement. These documents contain high-level requirements. These requirements can be used to see if developed software is as per the expected software or not. The next point is with respect to standards. For example, regulations, legal or security standards. These documents are used to see if developed software is as per the standards or not. Next is use cases or user stories. As mentioned before, this document will provide information regarding how a user is going to use the software. Next is system requirement or user documentation. This document will provide information regarding how the software should be implemented. Using this document, we can verify if the implemented software is as per the expected or not. The next requirement is a risk analysis report. As mentioned before, this document will help the tester to understand which feature is important as per that feature for testing will be selected. Apart from this, there are a few more requirements which act as input for acceptance testing. First, one is backup, restore and disaster recovery procedures. This document provides information regarding unusual conditions, like what happens if the system crashes. The next one is a non-functional requirement. This document provides information, like what should be the response time, stress testing, or maximum load on the system. The next one 
is the operations document. Here, we see how the software should be operated in the normal condition. The fifth point is deployment and installation instruction. This document provides information on how the software shall be installed and if there is any future software update, how that should be handled. The sixth point is related to performance targets. This document specifies how the software should respond. This is also one of the non-functional requirements. The last point is with respect to database. If you are working on cloud computing or SQL-related projects, then the type of data used by the software is mentioned in this document. These were the different requirements we can get for acceptance testing. Though there are many points to remember, you can categorize them into groups like requirements. It can be business, user, use cases, user stories, or system level requirements. The second group is standard like regulations, security, or legal. The third group is installation related like recovery, backup, disaster recovery, installation. The fourth group could be a non-functional requirement, like performance target. If you know the objective of the test level, then it will be easy for you to remember these requirements. Now let's summarize all the points which we covered until now. Component level test basis is detailed design, code, data model, component specification. Integration level test basis is software and system design, sequence diagrams, interface communication protocol specifications, use cases, architecture at component or system level, workflows, external interface definitions. System level test basis is system and software requirement specifications, functional and non-functional, risk analysis reports, use cases, epics, and user stories, models of system behavior, state diagrams, system and user manuals, and acceptance level test basis is business processes, user or business requirements, regulations, legal contracts, and security standards, use cases or user stories, system requirements, system or user documentation, risk analysis reports, backup and restore procedures, disaster recovery procedures, non-functional requirements, operations documentation, deployment and installation instructions, performance targets, database packages. All the requirements are documented in single page and attached to this video for your quick revision before the exam.